So let me show you guys um, what I mean. Let's move this off to the side for a second. Right now, it looks like the center point or the pivot point of this object is right up here in the top left, and that can happen when you go and you convert something to a symbol, okay, some artwork. Uh, and you can see the registration point, I guess that's the proper term, is uh, up here in the top left. You could set that to be like so. Uh, I'm going to cancel that out for right now and just uh, kind of adjust this posthumously. <laughs> Um, just by double clicking inside of the uh, the current symbol and then just moving it right over there and I think now let me publish this guy out uh, it's gonna open up device central again now you can see that um, sure enough it's more like what I had, had intended okay so that's a good sign everything is uh, working right there let's just go ahead and move this right back underneath there come back over here just like this Actually, come to think of it, uh, let's go and create another layer up this way, and we're going to call this one hole. So we need to make us a hole on stage, and let's make this about the same size as the ball. So, well, we'll just take a guess at that, actually. See, does that look about the same size? Oh, nearly perfect. Okay, drop that over there or wherever you want. And I'm going to go over here to convert to symbol. Let's call this hole. Oh, that's already in the library. I can think of it. Let's, uh, let's give it any other name then. Hole. And you know what? I maybe should have done the registration point in the middle. Hey, more teaching. <laughs> go over here to uh, modify, break apart. Uh, let's just start it over. Convert to symbol again. Let's call this hole two this time. And. There we go. Let's put that registration point right there. Of course, there's already a second hole in the library. How many times have I taught this lesson? Okay, I come over here to your instance name. Uh, let's give it a name of hole. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I want to do something kind of tricky. I'm going to double click inside of here. And uh, now we're looking at an independent timeline for just this specific uh, object. I'm going to create another layer up this way. And I'm going to put a stop action on it. So what am I doing? <laughs> going up there. Uh, just select this blank frame. Go over here to your actions. Go to stop. And then hide that up. I'm going to put in a few more frames out this way. Let's say out to 30. Right click, go to insert frame, and let's get another layer in here. And I'll start uh, labeling these so it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. And there's a few ways we could do this, but um, this is definitely the easiest one for this uh, particular lesson that's supposed to be about the accelerometer. <laughs> We're getting into some different turf now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ball, okay, and I'm going to copy it. All right, so I'm just copying it. I'm going to double click inside of here. I'm going to drop this ball in, uh, not at the first frame, but at the second one. So I'm going to go over here and put in a blank keyframe. All right, so just a little marker there. Paste this guy on in. And I'm just going to put in a little wobble animation. Um, as the ball then goes into this uh, hole here. And come to think of it, I probably need more like maybe 50 frames to do this right. So I'll just insert in a few more of these guys. And I'm going to put in a keyframe right out here. So just uh, go over here to insert keyframe. And I'm going to put this one right in the middle. Do the same thing out here. Insert uh, keyframe. Normally I'd hotkey these guys, but I'm actually on my laptop right now. and um, I haven't uh, set the modifier keys to up properly yet. I don't plan to be working on this computer that long. <laughs> anyway, um, what I'm uh, going to do is select all these frames right here. Just go down to uh, create classic tween. It's just kind of the old way of motion tweening something. And uh, it's uh, old but good. And uh, all right, so basically what's going to happen here is the ball will just kind of go from side to side and then finally come back down here and hopefully look like it's dropping when we do one other thing. So uh, go ahead and create another layer. Okay, uh, this one's going to be called mask. So let's type in here mask. And then a second layer for the ball. So let's call this uh, ball two. Right click and um, go to mask. All right. And then we're going to take the artwork from the actual hole right here. Okay, so copy this. And actually, we'll do this the slow way. Go to copy, select right here, paste in place. 
So this mask is right on top of the um, hole, and uh, let me just set the mask color to be blue so it's a little bit more obvious. In fact, actually what I'll do is I'll just show this as an outline as well. See a little purple outline right there? That is our mask, okay? And what it will be masking is this ball. All right, so again, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to hit... Um, Actually, I'm just going to right-click over here to insert blank keyframe. Then I'm going to go to paste in place. All right, so it doesn't look like anything happened there, but really there's another a second ball underneath um, this one on this layer. And actually, we can go ahead and blank this out at this point. So let's go and insert in a blank keyframe. And sure enough, again, you don't see any visual change because this is just the same ball right here, right here, just on a different layer. Uh, but now what we'll do is put in a keyframe over this way. Again, let's right-click, create um, classic tween. Uh, this time I'm going to ease out the ball into this final position right here. And now I'm just going to move it on down. Okay. Uh, we could also um, make it a little bit smaller too if you wanted. Oops. Hmm, that's kind of weird. I don't know why the center point's down that way, but it doesn't matter too much. Okay, so it's just going to wobble and then kind of drop in like that. And of course you could also um, tint this guy as well. You could tint it so it just gets a little darker on its way down. Um, if this is looking kind of scraggly like that, kind of like the um, the image got pixelated on the, or aliased on the edges, uh, what you can do is you can go over here and double click on the, um, the artwork that you brought in and then go over here to allow smoothing and that should make it look nice and pretty again. Okay, see, it looks much better. All right, so again, um, this, uh, this whole timeline is stopped initially, and you're just seeing that hole right there. What we'll do is um, when this ball collides into this area, we're going to make this ball invisible, and then we're going to show this ball. Just going to drop it in and fall in out of the universe. So, ready to do it? It's actually not that much code. So go back over here to scene three, and let's make this happen. Or, I'm sorry, scene one. Okay, so let's jump back over into our function for the updating the accelerometer. And I'm going to take um, two stabs at uh, doing this collision detection here. One is um, easier than the other one. And then uh, we will refine it just a little bit. And um, some of you might already know what I'm, where I'm headed with this. But uh, I'm going to show you the difference between hit test object and then hit test uh, point. Much easier just to do the object one first. And then we'll discover the, uh, I guess, insufficiencies of that one. But uh, so we're going to write uh, if and then whether or not this is true. OK, so if the ball is um, colliding with the hole here, in which case we will do our um, do our actions inside of here, which will be to write whole dot go to and play. Okay, so it's going to go to its second frame. All right, the one with all the animation inside of there, and then we will also make ball dot visible equal false. And you'd think that would be um, good and working, right? Well, there's one thing to consider which is that this code is getting run every uh, 50 milliseconds, all right? So this is also going to be getting run that often, and this will just keep being true, okay? And then it's just going to keep setting our um, hole to uh, go to and play that second frame, so we probably will see nothing really going on other than the ball just staying there on frame two. So what we need to do is throw in here a uh, just another variable, and I'm going to go create that variable variable up here at the very top of the file, and this will be just be a boolean type variable. We're going to call it is falling, okay, and this will be a boolean type, and we're going to say that this is initially set uh, to false, all right. Then we're just going to jump down here and do this uh, little double ampersand sign and make this be is falling. If that is uh, set to false, okay, then what we will immediately do is set is falling equal to true. Okay, so you can consider this like a question. Hey, is it falling? Yep, sure is at this point. And then that way, this if statement only um, evaluates to being true one time. Okay, just the initial collision. And then uh, the ball falls, so it goes to and plays frame two. And it will be invisible at that point. And then let's, uh, let's go and see what is going on now. Okay, 
let's move this up Oop, the other way off to the side and you'll notice it kind of um, well <laughs> we've got to address that shadow as well I forgot about